Okay, I'm, I'm going to explain you about backpropagation. If you have taken any machine learning or pattern recognition, recognition course, probably you know already about that. Uh, so again, I, um, I'm showing you this, uh, the, the deep, deep network, just to, to refresh that we have some parameters that we want to estimate that are the weights and the biases. And we have, uh, let's say, one function, which is uh, A. Here we call it A, which is linear. But then we use the activation function. So uh, Santi used the F. Uh, we use sometimes F for the final uh, output activation and G for in the middle uh, activation. So if you see these two, you, you can recognize when I'm at the end or not at the end, okay? So, uh, so the idea is that uh, at the end of your network, you, you have that output and you want to, let's say when you are classifying, you want to, to classify correctly. Um, and for that, uh, you have to tune well your, your parameters, the W and the, and the biases, okay? And from this output, usually you, you, you define what is called a loss function. That, that <coughs> will be the one that you want to, to maximize or minimize, depending on how you define it. But uh, let's say that uh, this loss function uh, quantifies the unhappiness you have with, uh, with what you get at the end. If it's a classification problem, okay, you have one score for each uh, class, you want to have one for the correct class and zero for the others. And, 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 and that's the, the goal at the end, okay? Not only that, not only you want to estimate the parameters, but uh, you need also some uh, optimization uh, ways to obtain uh, this minimum. And that's another topic uh, that, that is, uh, uh, that you can work on that and it's hard to solve and there are some proposal in, in networks to, to de this optimization. Okay, so, so let's, let's put the, the example here. Uh, let's see first, as, as Xavi has mentioned, we usually in a network you have a forward pass and a backward pass. In the forward pass you, you compute the output with the weights that you have at that moment uh, if it's at the beginning, you initialize whatever you, there are some di different ways to, to initialize, but uh, you, you have one first time and then you, you update your, your parameters, your weights, okay? So, um, so at, the, at the output, you, you have that uh, softmax that we mentioned, given one, one input, and you also uh, have as information, here we are with super, supervised learning, you know the right answer. This is also called, and we have seen it, the ground truth, okay? So you know w uh, the output you want, and uh, you have done that forward pass, and you get uh, this uh, probability with your parameters. And as I said, from here you want to, you define a loss function. A typical loss function is just this uh, called negative log likelihood function that at the end you, you, you want to minimize and you want to, to minimize to get the correct answer for, for, your, uh, for your example, okay? Uh, here I have add this, uh, this is called a regularization term and it's good, it's good for the vanishing gradient problem, okay? It, it's also a way to distribute, let's say you put one example and maybe that example would like to to, to emphasize some weights and to put the other weights mm -hmm. to zero. But then when you get another example, that's bad. So you, 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 you try that uh, these weights have a, are distributed. They are not con uh, concentrated on, on a few weights, okay? Uh, okay, so you want to minimize this log function with respect to all the parameters. And how am I, I'm going to do that because I have uh, parameters in different layers and and this the way to minimize the typical way to minimize that is that doing this uh, back propagation okay so this is the forward pass now let's say how I'm going to compute uh, the weights of each layer by back propagation by propagating the the error uh, so this is well before putting the, the scheme 
okay, we need to find these parameters uh, to minimize the loss function. Uh, as we will see, one way to do it is by, by uh, using this stochastic gradient descent. So it's based on, on the gradient of the, of the parameters. And uh, uh, there is something called mini batch, stochastic gradient descent. Uh, okay, mini batch, when, when you use stochastic gradient descent, it, it means that you're using one example only to get the, the, the values of your gradients. But instead of that, one way to reduce the variance is to use uh, a set of examples, and from this set of examples, you do so something like a mean of, of your gradient, and, and you reduce the variance. And, and that gives a better controls a little bit more the, 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 your gradients, okay? Um, okay, you, 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 you will uh, okay, minimize this loss function uh, with respect to your parameters. As we will say, uh, since we were going to do this uh, uh, to, to compute, to, to act actually to get new values of <coughs> the parameters for each layer, this, is, this will be called chain rule because you go one layer every time backwards to, and you propagate the values you have obtained through the beginning of the network, okay? Okay. Um, you will see that, that, that uh, this update depends on the error that you have pr produced just in the layer uh, that is nearer to the, to the output, as you will see now in, the, in this algorithm, okay? So let's say that we have uh, your loss function, okay? And then with your loss function, you're going to uh, now uh, run the backward pass to to give new values of your weight. So the first thing is that you, you obtain the error by differentiating over A. Remember, A was the linear part, which was the input by W plus the bias, okay? So, and so this function depends on, the, on what is the H, which is the output of the previous, uh, uh, the previous uh, step. For example, in this case, you, you, you obtain, this is the last, the final layer, this is the K capital, or in this case it's four, okay? So you do it, uh, differentiate over A4. So A4, eh, it's just, uh, it, it depends on, on, on H in, in four, and the difference between H, uh, the relation between H and A is the activation function. So you derive over the activation function, okay? One thing that I didn't mention, if, as you will see, we, we based all, all this pro procedure uh, based on gradients. So you need a loss function which is differentiable. You need uh, to use functions here that can be derived. Otherwise, you cannot use this backward, uh, back propagation algorithm. Okay, so you have here how you estimate the, your, your final error, okay? Once you have estimated your final error through these uh, functions that you have, uh, you compute, in this case, first, first step, when you're here, the weights of your last, of your last uh, layer. In this case, imagine we are in, in last layer, uh, you have capital K, the, the previous one is uh, K, K min, uh, little k equal to three. So you, you derivate against the A4, and you will see that depends on the on well, here on the differentiation respect to a, and uh, at the end you see that your weights depend on the on the error that you have in the following on the following uh, step, the last one and your h. Okay. Here, well, but we we didn't. Uh, we, you have to do the <laughs> same for the bias, but to simplify, we have just put the w. Okay. And, and finally, you again, you compute uh, delta three eh, with these uh, derivations <coughs> that, okay, in this case would be, uh, what is the error with respect to, in this case would be the following one, a, a uh, sub three, okay? And you do this procedure and you obtain one function uh, which, uh, which you have just uh, a new update of the weights by the error in the following, 
in the following uh, layer and you derive the activation function. And this procedure, as you can see, uh, only uses every time to estimate the W. You use the functions, the activation functions that you know the, the expression and all, but you use as a, th the number that you use is the error in the following, uh, in the following layer. And that's the back propagation algorithm, okay? Um, okay, once you, you, to update your parameters, there are, there are different ways to do it. As we said, the stochastic gradient descent takes uh, the weights that you have and you take into account this derivative that you ha just computed in, in the back propagation algorithm by some learning rate. This learning rate is, is quite important. We'll talk more about these hyperparameters. But uh, uh, when you program your deep network, this uh, parameter is, is very sensitive, so it has to be well adjusted, OK? Um, <coughs> OK, you can also decide that <coughs> uh, to add some momentum, you can also, uh, as we said, control the, the weights, uh, the influence of the weights, that's a regularization. And uh, just, just to finish, a uh, couple of things. You can, there, there are other algorithms that are using optimization we are not going to talk about. You can take a look at this, uh, at this uh, website here from Sebastian Ruth. Uh, Ruder, and uh, he explains very si in a simple way very different uh, types of uh, optimization algorithms. Here you have some examples. You can run over these. As that's the, let's say, so the different algorithms, how to try to reach the minimum. Um, they are faster or slower. They take, um, depending on the, on the, on the update, in a, in a way or another, okay? So you can go to this page and read about not only the stochastic gradient in the sense that we talk, but uh, other, <laughs> other uh, ways to, mean to optimize, okay? Okay. Yes, sure, no? No sé qué faig, <laughs> Ah, Castaval Chroma. Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, so I, I thought we. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, well, you can also go to to this reference here, which is that course in in deep learning for computer vision, and you have a very nice example when w that shows this back propagation that I told you, but using numbers, so using real functions, real data set real uh, weights and it's very interesting because uh, well you you have to be very aware that every time that you, you are training an algorithm you are using most many times this back propagation and parameters are I mean the way you choose your parameters your hyper parameters that we'll talk later uh, is very important okay and uh, well I, I didn't want to talk uh, much about uh, these uh, vanishing gradients, but uh, just to mention if that you, uh, Rashid knew about that, but uh, if you don't know what is the vanishing gradients, means that you remember the, your sigmoid. Your sigmoid is that function here. And uh, that means that uh, if you are working in this area or that area of your, of your sigmoid, okay, your, then uh, you may have this problem that you have gradients near to zero and, you, and with your chain rule, you're going to backwards, you're going to propagate this zero gradient value. So you have to be aware and try to, to, to work on the middle zone of, of your sigmoid, if you're using sigmoid, okay? Even, uh, even when you work in this, this area, uh, the maximum derivative, it's uh, around 0.25, so you also, in the, in the first layers, you are using a very small uh, gradient, and that um, can make you also some problems. Eh? So yes, this is very sensitive. You have to be aware of the way you, you do your, your training and, and control the parameters not to fall in this, 
in this area of the sigmoid. Okay?